second generation entrepreneur who focuses on the brand perception, who focuses on the stakeholder, who focuses on consumers, who does not believe in over addressing a marketing spiel, who thinks that business is all about delivering value to stakeholders. Let's talk to Mohit Goel, the CEO of Omax Limited. Hi Mohit. Hi ma'am. You have taken over the reins of Omax Limited now. As a young entrepreneur, what do you bring to the table and did it come all naturally to you? Um, ma'am, it's been 12 years in this industry and uh, I actually started from the bottom of the pyramid mm. wherein I was working in absolutely, I joined as an executive to the company and a lot of people actually didn't know mm. that uh, I'm the son of the chairman of this company. Okay. So the combination of vision of our chairman, of my father, and work at the bottom, I think this combination is very, very good mm. because uh, real estate is a very local business. Mm. Having a vision, a macro vision, with a micro knowledge of that particular place, mm. it is a lethal combination. So I think it was pretty natural to me. Okay. And uh, it's, it's me and my younger brother. So both of us have kind of are taking the company forward. Yeah. I take care of the business side of it and my younger brother, he takes care of the operation side of it. Were you trained for this or uh, what you picked up is on the, uh, at your dining table? I think it's my father's strategy with everyone in our company, not just me. Mm. Uh, there are a lot of owners mm. in the company. So he kind of just throws us in the pool and uh, keeps watching us from <laughs> outside that, okay, if you drown, I'm gonna come help you. <laughs> uh, but touch wood, uh, most of us kind of learned swimming in a good way. Okay. So that's, we've not been trained. We've been put in the spot, we've been given the seat and the seat has trained us. So what sets the Omax brand apart from others in this market? The fact that ma'am, uh, I mean, someone asked me this question, what's one word you can relate to Max with? That, that one word I can, uh, which comes to my mind is genuine. Okay. So whatever is genuine, we kind of do it with all the stakeholders of our company. Mm -hmm. From our investors, to employees, to customers, everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's, Omax is a listed company, yeah. so also our shareholders. Mm -hmm. So it is our duty towards each and every stakeholder to perform and we genuinely kind of perform for everyone. Okay. And how competitive are your projects in every micro market? I mean, 2001, we foreign into real estate. Mm -hmm. And we tried doing new things whenever, in whatever time, in whatever situation. You must have heard this word called sample flat. Mm -hmm. It's a very normal norm now in real estate. Mm -hmm. um, Chairman sir, my father, he brought this concept. Okay. Before. It was his first sample flat in Delhi, and I would say North India market, mm -hmm. which he built for the project called Forest, Sector mm -hmm. 92, mm -hmm. Noida. Mm -hmm. Got delivered in 2007. Before that, every, every real estate developer used to sell projects on paper. Yeah. That, you know, this is the layout and this yeah. is the building. Yeah. So people could not understand what exactly they're going to get. So sample flat was something which was the first time done by Omax. Mm -hmm. Then uh, this concept of integrated townships. Yeah. That was something again done for the by Biomax for the first time. Mm -hmm. I think NRI City in Greater Noida was our first stepping stone towards making Omax what Omax is today, mm -hmm. and that kind of gave us uh, the leap into how to develop a 95-acre township wherein you'll have everything, okay. literally like a mi micro mini city mm -hmm. where you don't have to get out of the city for any of your need. Okay. So from there, uh, we. From Delhi NCR, we foreign into a tier two, tier three cities in, mm -hmm. in 2005, six. That was again a very futuristic step, I would say. Mm -hmm. A lot of developers that time were thinking that, you know, uh, why to go to these cities and how would you manage the scale and everything because real estate being so local. But with this vision of our CMB sir, that uh, I'm gonna have this township uh, next to 100 cities, right next to the periphery of 100 cities. So because of that, we went to these cities mm -hmm. and uh, Touchwood, we've done very, very well. 2007, we got listed. Our uh, Vivo was subscribed by 60 times. Mm -hmm. So that kind of showed the faith by all the investors as well in our company mm -hmm. that whatever strategies we were taking were right. Mm -hmm. Did so, all cities perform equally? That's exactly what I was coming <laughs> to. Because, you know, uh, once you, you can't be perfect in everything. Yes. So uh, we foreign into 27 cities, mm -hmm. eight states. Presently, as we speak, we are consolidating in nine cities. Mm -hmm. the rest of the cities, we have either sold the land, mm -hmm. which we bought in, in, in the past, or we've delivered the project, whatever project we got there. 
So the whole strategy why we left those cities was were because the markets according to us were not that big. Okay. Number two, our brand image somehow was not either number one or number two. Okay. So it was simple strategy that when where in whichever city where our brand image is not number one, number two, we're gonna get out of that city. Okay. Because in real estate it takes a lot of time to build brand, the real brand, yeah, right. not when you just put. Uh, five top uh, front pages on TOI, not yeah. that kind of brand. So to build a brand, you really need to promise something to your customer, deliver, and it takes three to five years to deliver, and that's when I feel that you build a brand. Mm -hmm. So 2008-9 happened, and um, you know this subprime crisis happened in US, and everyone went through the recession. Overall, the econ world economy went through a recession, mm -hmm. and all the listed players that time were feeling that oh, they were feeling the brunt. Mm -hmm. And we also did. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's it's a known fact, and nothing to hide it. And 2009 is the time actually when I joined. Okay. So I always say uh, that you know the worst times are the best times to learn. Absolutely. And uh, since then, I feel that you know uh, people are talking about recession these days. Mm -hmm. Last five mm -hmm. years, I've, I always tell them that you know, there is no recession. <laughs> we are doing very well. And uh, from 2009 till 2015, we just concentrating on deliveries. Okay. We did not talk of expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, me and my father, we sat down together. We talked about two things. Is, is land getting over in India? Mm -hmm. No. Is real estate business getting over in India in the next five years? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's just you know, be like this and just concentrate on deliveries of what we promised to our yeah. customers. Okay. So if you see from 2009 till 2015, we used to deliver around eight to 10 million square feet every year. That was a time when a lot of competitors came in the market. Mm. Noida, Gurgaon, there were a lot of new brands. Mm. Uh, we could have been swayed away mm. that you know they're also launching projects, they're also buying land. So instead of putting this money into construction, mm. let's put this money into expansion yeah. And, yeah. and let's also launch uh, brands because the markets were doing very well right. from uh, 10 till like 14. Mm. But we just kept on focusing on delivery and which in a longer run, now I feel it's paying off. Did you and not launch anything new? Not at all, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so all we did was we had a land bank which we bought kind of before 2009 mm -hmm. and uh, we were launching and we were monetizing those land banks. Okay. As I said, we were also uh, selling of those assets mm -hmm. in the cities where we were getting out from. Okay. So, and uh, from 2015, mm -hmm. we thought, okay, now because we've delivered all our promises, that's when we thought of expanding further. And that's exactly when we started scouting for projects in Delhi and CR mm. and the cities where we already were doing very well. Mm. We couldn't find any good asset. Okay. From 15 till 18, we were very patient. Mm. Again, this uh, generally in uh, you know whatever business you do, there is some sort of FOMO. Yeah. Fear of missing out yeah. of yeah. launches in real estate. Right. Right. And uh, somehow I feel that in real estate, you know, only the launches are celebrated. If any developer who's launching a 5,000 crore project, there'll be like a lot of media, Jing Bank, right. and uh, but in our company, mm -hmm. we celebrate more delivery. Okay. Uh, there is more Jing Bang and there is more happiness and there's, there'll be more celebrations in our company and you'll see when we deliver our project. Also when we launch, but <laughs> twice when we deliver. Okay. So uh, we've always been focused on delivery that way. So 15 to 18, I was saying uh, yeah. uh, we were looking for scouting for yeah. land. Yeah. And 18, that's when we got hold of one land in uh, Chandi Chowk. Mm -hmm. the, we've launched a project called Omax Chowk. It's a joint venture with MCD. Mm -hmm. We've taken the land from them and it's a PPP model project yeah. wherein we are supposed to make 2,500 car parking. And in lieu of that, we're getting a four lakh square feet of retail. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one project which is which is done really well for Omax, and I would say now NRI City was one which took Omax to the next level. Omax Chalk is the next project which is taken to Omax to the next level again. Oh. So, uh, going forward, if you talk about our projects, we are focusing on nine cities, and if I can list out yeah. these nine cities, uh, it's Chandigarh and Ludhiana mm -hmm. in Punjab, Lucknow, Allahabad in UP, um, Faridabad in Haryana, Indore in MP. Delhi NCR, mm -hmm. Delhi, Noida, Gurgaon. Okay. Noida, Gurgaon, you would not probably find our projects mm -hmm. right now, but we are scouting land. And as I said, I'm extremely choosy in picking up my land because uh, you know that zimmedari is there, yeah. and, uh, and that FOMO is not there at all. Yeah. Uh, because once you buy the land and you're selling, the investor is kind of trusting you as a brand mm -hmm. that he's going to get better returns right. by buying my product. Right. So I have to be absolutely sure which land and which location I'm buying so that he gets the return. Right. 
so that's pretty much the story of uh, all our projects and as we speak um, you know in terms of i always talk about the brand you know mm. what is brand is brand some brand some company which is launched 100 projects in a month mm. or some company which is doing a lot of branding so i should not take a name but uh, there is this company in delhi ncr uh, there is this dialogue that bachcha a b c d bolne se pehle wo brand bolna seekhta hai and not take the name uh, so or or what is brand so yeah. brand is according to me once you launch your project your brand sells first than any of your competition mm -hmm. and that happens only if you only on your past record 15 to 20 men there were many uh, turmoils in the mm -hmm. sector mm -hmm. gst rera demon covid turmoil or i would say you know changes in the industry right. and um, change is very important for any industries with each change our company grew stronger you know because that's when people started differentiating between a brand mm -hmm. and a non brand right that's when customers started asking for your report card yeah. boss who are you yeah. what have you delivered like show me your projects make me meet your existing customers mm -hmm. and exact that's you know when that started happening we started coming out ourselves mm -hmm. we are doing exactly the same okay. it's just that we've got uh, one lakh customers now and they're happy with us and that's the reason we are kind of selling so in short <laughs> that that that's how our projects are performing okay mohit we were talking about what makes a project competitive in the market define it for the consumer how does a project become competitive ma'am omax is generally uh, you know as a brand we are competitive because sometimes you need to see the dna of the person who is running omax papa is competitive and i think so so am i and uh, what do i mean by competitive we we are not cookie cutter developer we don't just try to make uh, you know uh, okay without taking names again there are, there are, there's a developer in bombay or there's a developer in noida you will see their building and you'll see oh it's that developer you'll get to know it's their way of doing developments our way of doing development is every time you're going to see our project you're going to see something new and that new is blended with that particular micro location because as i'm saying that real estate is a very local subject yeah. we try to mix the macro vision of us with the micro location and micro market of that so you would see uh, many new amenities elevations are of our projects are very good and very good i am not saying very good my customers have said very good and uh, competitiveness we bring with the scale of a project you know we do large townships and uh, with large townships you can afford to give those amenities which a smaller project cannot get they just can't give because it is they can't afford it otherwise the project will not be feasible for them for example um, i was recently giving this example to someone we're doing a 2300 acre township in lucknow we are thinking of making that city that 2300 acres uh, pollution free pollution is a huge problem in north india we are working on a technology where there'll be one tower or there'll be five towers in and around that 2300 acres and the aqi level will be below 60 otherwise it's usually 250 to 350 which is a normal thing now the cost of the, that technology will be at least you know more than 100 crores and i don't think so a smaller developer or a smaller township or a smaller project can afford it so that kind of uh, competitive ness we bring in our projects and we always try to differentiate that what new are we doing with our project so uh, we are competitive and we 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 are new okay uh, that translates into you said faster sales what about post sales does that command a uh, value higher than the rest of the market is that is that a, a you know past delivered projects they are the most visible street furniture in that city right so uh, how do you ensure that your past projects also live up to the uh, brand that you are creating today i'm going to give you three examples to that three facts first fact uh, in real estate usually a developer spends 1 to 2% of their sales value in their marketing o max number is 0.2 we don't spend more than 0.2% of our sales value in marketing that is because i have my existing customers talking high about me i get maximum sales with reference so that speaks for itself number 2 there been projects ma'am which we have delivered 10 years back we've gone back and we've done whitewash 
we painted the project all by our expenses. Even when it is handed over to us? It RWS. is handed over 10 years back. And we've done that recently, uh, there are many examples. Mm -hmm. And so we take care of our customers. We're not just like, we call them a maxim, they'll be a maxim for life. Right. And uh, that's how much we take care of our brand. The third point, uh, how I can tell you that, you know, uh, how we take care of our uh, customers is that, you know, we, we're not just delivering 10 acres and running away from there and going somewhere else. So we just can't mess with them because we are, del we are launching a project right next to them. So we have to have to take care of them. So uh, they've been customers in our township staying last seven, eight years and we are delivering launching projects right in front of their eyes. So uh, we've been taking care of them with, in, with the best technology available in the market. We give them best post sale services possible. During COVID times, uh, they were frontliners. Salute to doctors, policemen and everyone. We were also somehow frontliners because these people were staying in our townships. These people were getting their uh, daily ka commodities from our team. So our team was taking care of them. Our team were given a responsibility. We adopted each and every person who was above, above 60 year old in our township and we took care of them personally. So uh, that's all I can say that man. we care for our customers and, uh, and that's Does how that the Does that translate is. into above average values, uh, above locality level values? in your townships? In terms of the sales price we do? Yes. Not only your sales price, but post, uh, people are staying there. Now, even in the secondary markets, does an Omax brand com uh, command a higher price? Absolutely, ma'am. Like the uh, secondary market, the resale value of Omax, Omax, any project, any property will be at least 10 to 20% higher than any competitor. Also, it's gonna be faster. You have to sell, you can sell within a week. If you have to sell my competitor's product, then probably you'll take another one month or two months. So, so we are a mix of Maruti and Toyota, you know, that's, so that's what we, we aspire to be as well and that's where we're reaching and we've almost reached as well. Which is the target segment for you in the market? Do you, do you uh, cater to, the, to all segments of the market, lower, mid, upper mid, highest? What do you uh, cater to? Ma'am, we are a city developer. You know, a city has everyone. So we don't have a TG wherein we're going to exclude any WS or LIG or MIG or, you know, HIG. We cater to everyone. It's because in a township you would see a villa worth 10 crores, you would see an apartment worth 50 lakhs. So we've not identified as such. We've uh, structured in terms of the products, in, in terms of the amenities with each bracket we offer to our, these customers. So for a city developer, we have to target each and every category. Mohit, the company is uh, as good as its employees, right? Uh, what is your relationship with your employees and what, is, what do the employees feel about the Umax brand? Um, Umax, uh, everybody asks this question, how come Umax expanded so much, uh, real estate being such a local business? If you see uh, the top company of this country, they are known for one particular city and they were not so very well managed, they will not be able to manage so many other cities. Mm -hmm. The fact we are able to manage these cities, kudos and all the credit goes to, I would not say the employees, the, these family members of Omax who have been with Omax last 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, we trust each other. They're, they're, they're like mini me or they're like mini papa. Mm. They can take decisions worth uh, 50 crores, 100 crores without talking to us. They can tell us that, you know, they've decided. Mm. And we are so sure that they, they've taken decision in favor of the company and in favor of all the stakeholders of the company. Okay. That's how much we trust each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, the relationship is very collaborating, ma'am. Uh, it's, it's like, uh, as a person, any which I'm a person who loves to listen to no. Uh -huh. If someone disagrees with me, you know, that's when I enjoy the conversation and that's when I feel that, okay, this person has something else to give me and that's when I learn something mm. from someone, you know. If, mm. if the person keeps saying yes, I'm not learning, I'm not evolving. Yeah. So uh, we have healthy chats and we have healthy debates and discussion over whatever subjects uh, we, we decide, you know, on a daily basis or yeah. probably monthly basis. Usually we have to decide on the macro factor. Uh, and I would say one incident, you know, where... Uh, we usually get into a tough competition or tough discussion or tough debate. We have com uh, committees. If I am kind of not agreeing with the other person, the other person is also not agreeing with me, we have a third person to go to. 
and it is already mutually decided yes. that if the arguments between person A and person B, the person C is already decided that we'll go to person C and if whatever person C says, we have to agree. Okay. So that's how we take our uh, calls and uh, you know, uh, and real estate is all about experience. Yeah. Ma'am, you cannot go to Harvard or you cannot go to Stan Stanford and you can do business in Indore, real estate mm -hmm. business in Indore or as we speak, we're, we're, we're talking in Faidabad, you do not need a Harvard degree to do business in Faidabad, real estate business in Faidabad. Yeah. You need to be here. You need to experience the cycles of real estate. Mm. You need to experience when what product goes up and what, when what product goes down. And the values and everything. So uh, the, the fact that they are so experienced and with the right intent and uh, so we bring a lot of uh, value to the table. Okay. All these family members. Now the other end of the spectrum is your, uh, your residents. People who have bought from you who are living in those townships. You offered them a certain infrastructure, a certain way of life. How do you ensure that they continue to get that way of life? That uh, infrastructure uh, does not get decrepit, aging, uh, old, uh, you know, out of sync with the modern uh, requirements. How do you ensure that the township remains as fresh as when it was launched? Ma'am, till the township is with us, I mean, till the time um, the RW doesn't take yeah. handover from us, the, yeah. of the whole township, we are responsible for the township. And uh, as I said, ma'am, we are launching our project in the same township. Yeah. You cannot expect a new customer. I mean, how do you expect me to sell to a new customer with a broken road? Right. Or with a, with a street light not working over there? He's going to walk the same road, take a right turn, there's another new project, he's going to see the land, see my product, lay out and buy the project. Mm. So by default, all our townships kind of stay in a very new kind of a way. Mm. You, it's going to be fresh, you, you'll feel and you'll go there and you'll feel that, you know, uh, we just launched a project a couple of years back. Mm. So it's by default, like I don't have to uh, kind of put concentration on this word that mm. why we take care of it and how we take care of mm -hmm. it. And as I said, we use the best available technology mm -hmm. in construction, in managing the services, uh, in maintaining and uh, keeping the beauty of these townships intact. And these townships come with certain uh, elements packed together, right? There is safety and security, there is uh, greenery, there, there are so many others. Tell me, tell me a little more about where, uh, what is the promise of uh, services and uh, uh, maybe, maybe an experience in a town, uh, OMAX township. Ma'am, usually uh, people come to Max Township for a, for a lifestyle upgradation. They are just, uh, they've been in a city, uh, hustle bustle city, noise pollution, a small 2 BHK. They, they're always worried about where the kids will go to play. They're worried about, okay, we have to go on a Saturday and drive for one hour to a mall. So all these worries are taken care of in this township. Mm -hmm. Because once you get into this township, you, your family is absolutely secured. There is a lot of greenery for each age group of, of a person. Like we've got parks for senior citizens, we've, park, we've got parks for toddlers, kids, teenagers, and people who want to probably hold hands and enjoy their Valentine, those kind of parks also we've made. So, uh, and for entertainment, because the second thing after security and safety, people want entertainment. Mm -hmm. They want to spend their money in a good way. Mm -hmm. So for that, you, do, you don't have to travel 30 minutes, 45 minutes. The, the mall or the place to go to for any kind of entertainment, it's right there in the okay. township. Okay. So uh, if, if you want to be just tension free mm -hmm. and enjoy your life and probably just concentrate on your work and family bonding, come to Max. Township. So uh, during the lockdown, one of the uh, trends that we noticed at Magic Bricks was that uh, uh, people who have smaller houses want larger houses. You need more space, right? More living space. Are you seeing a lot of upgrade from your own bias, previous bias? Absolutely, ma'am. So uh, how I can tell you this? Because mm. a lot of um, suggestions came to our commercial department, CRM department, and they said, you know what? If I have a 3 BHK with Omax, say one project called the Lake in Chandigarh mm -hmm. and I want to take the 4 BHK. Mm -hmm. Will I get a certain discount? You're selling at this market rate because I booked 4 BHK, you know, three years back. Mm -hmm. So three years back, your rate was 20% lesser than this. Please give me a discount and all that. I've mm -hmm. got like around 2 to 250 requests in one project itself. Okay. So there's this project called the Lake and uh, we got requests in a commercial department that they want to upgrade from a 3 BHK to a 4 BHK. The request was the fact that, you know, I booked at certain rate mm. three years back, mm. which is lesser than 
20 percent lesser than the present rate. Can I get that extra area of 1,000 square feet at the old rate? So we took a call and we kind of gave those discounts to our existing customers because uh, they were existing. I didn't have to go acquire that customer. So there is definitely a trend wherein a person wants to have a bigger house, mm. two to three, three to four, and from apartment to a villa, from villa to a farmhouse, mm. and uh, we see this trend for sure. Are you also helping uh, your old customers sell off their old property so that they can upgrade to new? We don't have a, a very structural uh, way of helping them, yeah. but we definitely have a set of associates uh, for each and every project. Mm. And we tell our customers that, you know, these are our uh, chosen associate. Mm. You go meet them and they'll help you out. Mm. If they're not able, able to help you out, please, you can talk to us. Okay. There's not a structured way. I would sure. not say that OMAX has a resale wing kind of a thing. Right. We don't get into that because uh, there I always try to, uh, you know, I'm scared that I lose my image. Okay. So I don't want to. I don't want to play with my image or brand. Okay. That for one person or two person, no max is doing this or no max is doing that. That I don't want to risk that at all. Okay. So we do give our services to the customers, but indirectly. Okay. Uh, while we are on upgrades, uh, a lot of uh, uh, design re-engineering is happening in the Indian real estate market as we speak. What about Omax? How are you uh, catering to the new requirements of the consumers? extra space, small alcoves which can double up as office space and so on. Are you doing anything around design? Ma'am, uh, work from home is a new thing. And uh, whatever people say, it's here to stay. Yeah. Because, or because of the digital era we are living in. Even if the COVID is completely over, if I can manage my work from home, why should I travel for 30, 40 minutes and go to an office right. and work from there? Why? Because we have transitioned from an industrial age era working to a technology era Absolutely. working. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's why people are demanding for bigger homes. Right. That's why people are demanding for a small, like a study room they've changed exactly. into an office room. Right. So we are trying to, uh, there's this new project we, uh, we've launched in Ludhiana. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a 6,000 square feet apartment wherein we have one particular room of 1,000 square feet with every every technology inbuilt in it where you can do uh, this video calling anywhere in the world uh, just like imagine like a study room turned into a small office room like and it is uh, it is kind of outside area like the apartment is is yeah. behind and this is outside area if any client is also coming mm -hmm. if, if an architect is there in this yeah, house yeah. and he asks the client to come and visit and show the presentation he can come from outside only he can do his meeting and and go out okay. the the family doesn't get disturbed right so all these changes we're bringing in our layouts and for layouts and design ma'am because as i said that uh, omax we always try to do something new mm -hmm. in terms of elevation so we in terms of design we are always what we try to do is to be efficient oh. You must be knowing these terms. Of course, you know these terms. You are way before than me. Um, uh, super area and carpet area. You know, uh, you, I should not challenge this, but uh, as a journalist, you should go out and you can check who is doing better in terms of efficiency. Who is giving better efficient design homes to the customers? Mm -hmm. I think we'll be number one or number two. Okay. We work in there every a market. Lot. In every market, ma'am. Okay. We'll, we'll not be having so much of super area in our in our apartments or villas or whatever we sell. Okay. Mohit, across these last five years, what we have noticed is that companies have struggled with capital adequacy issues, with, uh, you know, working capital issues and so on. Did you ever face these? And if so, how did you overcome them? If I'm going to say no, I did not face this, ma'am, I'm going to lie. Yeah. So I definitely faced it. Yeah. In 2009 was the time when we faced this the most. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly was the time when we just put our, put our head down and we just concentrated on delivery and forgot about expansion. Right. If a developer forget about the greed, of, I should not use the word greed, that's not the right word. Forget about the word ambition, that I want my boards all across the city. I want 100 projects in five years. If he forgets about that and just concentrate on one thing, that whatever I am doing, let me do the best. Mm -hmm. I don't think so, he'll have financial issues. Mm -hmm. The fact that somehow, he goes down in his ambition. Don't go down. Because, uh, this is not your money. This is not your money. Either you've borrowed from the market, yeah. you borrowed from the bank, or you have borrowed from your customer. Because till the time you do not deliver your product, it is a debt. People always forget, 
you know at the time of launch you get 20 30% of the total sales value in like oh my god i'm a rich guy no you're not a rich guy you'll you'll probably make your profit once after you deliver the product okay so uh, if you concentrate on that you'll not face uh, financial uh, problems post 2009 we've been working with exact same mantra no not a lot of projects one or two in a year where i'm absolutely sure where i'll make money my investor will make money and when i'm absolutely sure that you know if i'll be able to sell 25% of the project mm -hmm. my project will be delivered okay because usually all these developers are dependent on the sales to deliver the project yeah if sale doesn't happen they'll not be able to deliver mm -hmm. simple as that okay. it's like a chicken egg situation yeah so the brand is such you know 25% of very less threshold like we sell around 70 80% why why do you have a such a small threshold of 25% in the industry uh, many of the industry leaders have told me that they need to sell 50 60% of the project for the project to be complete what makes you uh, makes it possible for you in 25% sales that's that's because ma'am the land is mine and uh, i take out my profit absolutely in the end okay. i put my customers interest first so whatever money comes to me uh, goes into the construction first right. so that's the reason the threshold is 25% okay. all these people uh, who are giving 50 60% logic probably the land would be bought and there'll be a huge debt okay so as a company we do not have huge debt uh, the last in may 2020 uh, during lockdown our debt was 1600 crores March 2021 will be at 1200 and uh, we've taken this challenge and this target to make a, make this company debt free by September 22 so this threshold will come even lesser yeah. in the next interview probably when we do <laughs> right. has there ever been a time mohit when your project has been late and if so how do you cope with that delay definitely ma'am uh, once that 2009 crisis happened so our construction and all our project was delayed by around 12 to 18 months mm. so the best way we thought of uh, kind of compensating this delay because whatever said and done customer they'll not buy the story that, that you know there was this economy recession and whatever they paid on time it's not their mistake yeah. whatever said and done. so there were two ways how we compensated first in our agreement the penalty clause was there so we paid up penalty in full mm -hmm. we absolutely complied with our agreement on top of that For example, I promised you 10 amenities in your group housing. We gave at least 15. So that's how we uh, we compensated. That we made our projects much better than what we promised to them. So these are the two ways we kind of uh, compensated the delays. And communication with that consumer is very important, right? Absolutely. I see. This is the age of communication. Like if you really can't communicate in this age, I don't think so. uh you'll be able to sell you'll be able to be perceived well in the market you could be a diamond mm. but if you cannot talk like a diamond you might be perceived as like a koila and it's not your mistake it's just the way age is yeah this times are such so you have to communicate directly to the customer you swear by delivery timelines now right what technologies do you use that help you deliver on time ma'am we've been using conventional methods till now but uh, there are a couple of new technologies uh, which we've adopted number one i can give an example of the steel structure mm. so we're doing this project called omax chalk in mm. chandni chalk in delhi mm. and we're making the whole structure using precast steel so we've tied up with jspl in that they are providing the material and they are uh, building it for us as well mm -hmm. so that's one way the second is precast yeah. method mm. so wherein the floors which we used to deliver in 24 months we'll be able to deliver in 6 months okay so the prototype is going on right now mm -hmm. we are working on the technology now that is a new technology it is that we are adopting it now okay so uh, as soon as it's going to be adopted well and we'll start delivering our projects in 6 to 12 months not 24 months so when you when you adopt precast one of the very basic things that you have to change is that you have to standardize right absolutely and are, are all omax projects going to go for standardization not all but the fact that we have scale hmm. you know we, uh, for, for example in, in chandigarh we are about to launch 1000 crores floors hmm. so there'll be around 2500 units of floors hmm. in those 2500 units there'll be five types of floors okay so one type there'll be 500 right so 500 are enough for one precast right so there'll be different types mm. but one type the scale is such the econo economies of scale make sense for precast to uh, adopt for us to adopt that technology mm -hmm. so 
it's going to be fine for us. So where does the street cars get constructed? You have your own factories? On our site. On the site. So like in Chandigarh, we have... Uh, so usually ma'am, our townships are big and we have land passes over there to fix the this street cars factory. Mm -hmm. Either we're going to make it ourselves or we're going to tie up with someone who knows the technology since a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to have a setup in our township and they'll de start delivering from there. Okay. And the gestation period, because these townships are going to be there for the next 10 to 15 years, also, so it makes sense from, for them to set up their factory there. Right. Um, Mohit, when you're marketing, you, you fixed uh, deliveries, you fixed finance, you fixed the kind of uh, design that the consumer wants. What about marketing? Has marketing changed? I think, ma'am, we've been very basic with marketing. We, we, we are not people who shout from top of the world. We let our delivery talk. We let our customers talk. But there is one thing which I have noticed and I have started doing, to go direct. Mm. Somehow I feel, you know, in a, in a change of communication, if I tell you something and you tell to the other person and that other person tells to the other person, mm. the intent is lost. Mm. The whole crux of the communication gets lost. Mm -hmm. So now I've started communicating to my prospective customers, my associates directly. Okay. And this is exactly what I started, uh, you know, this is like blessing in disguise, I would say, post-COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, we realized this word called webinar. Right. And <laughs> everybody started coming on webinar and started doing video calls. And that's when I started talking to them directly. Yeah. And uh, taking their questions directly. Mm -hmm. And it was, it became so quick and it became so effective mm -hmm. that any person who feels that, you know, this is the question which is troubling them to take their decision decision mm -hmm. on whether to buy or not, I, if I can answer them directly, mm -hmm. they can uh, take their call with very easily and very quickly. Okay. So in marketing, we are direct, we are very crisp. I get into the shoes of the investor and customer and ask myself those questions. Um, uh, usually my FAQs are that strong that I don't leave any question left to be answered by someone else okay. or to be asked by someone else from yeah. me. Yeah. And if even if there is, I am there on webinar to answer them. So we record those webinars and then it is there for any other customers to watch it. Uh, Mohit, currently how many projects do you have going and uh, are they uh, in how many cities are they and how many million square feet? Give us some broad numbers. Um, currently ma'am, 21 real estate projects of ours are going and uh, it's spread over 21, 20 acres. Mm -hmm. And usually our speed of delivery is around 6 to 8 million square mm -hmm. feet per annum. Mm -hmm. uh, excluding 2020 mm -hmm. uh, because of yeah. the lockdown and this thing. Um, going forward, I think we'll continue with six to eight million square feet of delivery. Until now, we've delivered around 127 million square feet. Mm -hmm. The cities we are present in, from 27, we've brought it down to 15 mm -hmm. as we speak, mm -hmm. but we're gonna bring it down to nine. Mm -hmm. And in those nine cities, we're gonna expand further. And category, residential, retail, commercial? Ma'am, uh, so in terms of uh, the the socio-economic thing mm -hmm. from EWS to super luxury, we kind of do everything because of the city, yeah. because we're a yeah. city developer. Yeah. Yeah. Similarly, category, we do each and every category because we're a city developer. Mm -hmm. From plots, floors, villas, group housing, to a retail mall, to a high street, to office space, everything we kind of deliver and make. Let me ask you something uh, out of the box. Uh, there are new categories of real estate evolving as we speak. There is warehousing, there is logistics, there's all kinds of... Student housing, co-living. Co housing, co-living, yes, co-working. Yes, ma'am. Are you interested in entering these or you feel that you should stick to your core? So here, ma'am, um, we took a very conscious call in 2016. So co-living, co-working, this became like a euphoria yeah. recently, yeah. almost a couple of years back. I uh, researched on these two terms in 2016. After doing a research around six months, eight months, I decided I'm not going to get into this space. Mm -hmm. This is a very thin margin product. You need a long-term capital to do this product. Mm -hmm. And this is something which our DNA is not there. Okay. So we never chose to get into this space. Mm -hmm. So warehousing, logistics, student living, co-living, co-working, all these space we kind of stayed away from. Okay. And we like to stay away from in future also. Great. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.